Hello, I'm Roger Firestein, and with me is Suzanne Chamberlain. And you know, Roger, there's nothing worse than spending lots of time coming up with a great solution, only to discover you've solved the wrong problem. So today we're going to focus on generating lots of different ways of looking at problems using a tool called the Ladder of Abstraction. But first, a quick word about problems. You'll remember that the typical way of stating a problem is to focus on the symptom or first impression of the problem, such as... The roof leaks, the roof leaks. Well, stating that way is okay if you want to use it as an obstacle and to dwell on your problems. Poor, poor me, poor awful me, the roof leaks, life's awful. Roger, rather than being miserable, you can invite solutions naturally by adding one of the three statement starters that we use for problem statements. How to, how might, and what ways might. Taking our example of the roof leaks, we add a statement starter and ask, how to stop the roof from leaking? Well, we could put on new shingles, we could patch any cracks with roofing tar, we could fix the gutters, we could unclog the gutters. Thank you, Roger. See how easy it is. Statement starter sends a signal to your brain that you're asking for solutions, not putting up an obstacle. So let's talk a little more about how to generate lots of different ways of looking at problems using the ladder of abstraction. I'll be back with this in just a minute, Jonathan. Hey, come back here with my ladder. Do you want your roof fixed or not? Hey, just hang on a minute. And, and I mean, just hang on. There probably isn't one correct definition of any problem. However, some definitions of the problem are more likely to lead to success than others. The value of looking for alternative ways of attacking the problem is that you can explore what you really want to solve. The ladder of abstraction that we're talking about isn't an actual ladder like this one. It's a technique that is especially useful to help discover new dimensions of a problem or challenge. Remember that when you're generating lots of problem statements, you want to follow these rules. Defer judgment, strive for quantity, seek wild ideas or options, combine and build on ideas or options. The ladder of abstraction is especially useful for helping you to break out of a rut when you're looking for lots of different ways to define a problem or when you get stuck and you can't think of any other ways of stating the problem. Like this real ladder, the ladder of abstraction is useful to help to elevate your view of the problem, to widen your scope, to be more visionary. Or the ladder can help you to be more grounded, to narrow or focus on more concrete views of the problem that are more tactical in nature. The ladder of abstraction is quite simple, really. All you do is ask a few questions, and then you rephrase the answers. The first step, of course, is to take a look at a statement of the challenge or problem that you want to redefine, such as... How to market the business. Next, ask the question, why? So, Roger, why do you want to market the business? Because I'd like to sell more of my ladders. Next, rephrase the answer as a statement of the problem, starting with how to, how might, or in what ways might. Okay, how to sell more ladders. Good. Now we want to continue this, so next ask, why else? So, Roger, why else do you want to sell more ladders? Well, because I'd like to make more money. Okay, then phrase that as another statement of the problem. How to make more money. Then keep asking, why else? Either of the original problem or build off some of the others that you generated. For example, why else do you want to make money? Well, so I can save money for retirement. So I'd phrase that as, how to save money for retirement. Good. Why else do you want to make money? Well, so that we can hire more people to grow the business. So, how to grow the business. Great. So you can see we just went from how to sell more ladders to how to make more money to how to save money for retirement, to how to grow the business. We've opened up the problem area considerably from focusing on selling more ladders to focusing on how to grow the business. There are quite a few more avenues for solutions in the second statement, how to grow the business, than there are in the first statement, how to sell more ladders. So we open up the problem area by asking why and why else. We can also narrow the problem area down if it's too broad or vague by asking another question, what's stopping you? To do that, we use a similar set of steps. First, we state the problem or challenge that we want to work on. How to sell more ladders. Okay. Next, ask the magic question, what's stopping you? Well, no one knows that I sell ladders. Next, phrase this as a statement of the problem, starting with how to, how might, or in what ways might. Okay. How might I let people know that I sell ladders? Now ask, what else is stopping you? Well, I'm not at home very often to sell the ladders then turn that into a statement of the problem. Okay, how to find someone else to sell the ladders for me. Well done, Roger. Again, we can continue to build off the original problem or challenge, or we can build off subsequent statements of the problem, such as what is stopping you from finding someone else to sell the ladders for you. Well, I don't know who else sells ladders, so I'd phrase that as how to determine who sells ladders. 
What else is stopping you from finding someone else to sell ladders for you? Well, I just need to hire somebody, so maybe how to hire someone to sell ladders. So you can see that by starting from how to sell more ladders, we went to how might I let people know that I sell ladders, to how to find someone else to sell ladders for you, to how to determine who sells ladders, to how to hire someone to sell ladders. By asking the question, what's stopping you, we really got specific with our statements of the problem to the point that Roger doesn't even need to spend much time in solving it because he really narrowed the scope of his problem. It's true. We've really narrowed the scope of my problem. And in fact, I know how to solve some of these problems without even generating solutions with a tool like brainstorming. Remember that you can ask the why and what's stopping you questions about any statement of the problem, not just the one that you start with. This can really help you to see the problem from lots of different angles. We've demonstrated how to use a ladder abstraction with one person. So now you're probably asking yourself, can I use this with a group? The answer, of course, is yes. Yes, you can use this with a group if you're working together to generate lots of ways of looking at the problem. It's simple. Start with the goal, wish, challenge, or statement of the problem. The facilitator then asks the group to think about why would the client want to solve this. Now turn that answer into a statement of the problem. With a little practice, your group will be able to generate lots of new, different statements of the problem to really expand the scope of the problem. Now that you know how to use the ladder of abstraction, you're probably thinking, when do I use it? Use the ladder of abstraction when you're stuck in a rut while you're trying to generate statements of the problem, when all of your statements of the problem seem to be saying the same thing. Also, use the ladder of abstraction when you want to simplify the statement of the problem. Use the what's stopping you questions to narrow or simplify that problem. You can use the ladder of abstraction to find out what are the larger issues around a problem as well. Use the why question to find out what is the umbrella problem or to find out what is the overarching problem. You can use the ladder of abstraction whenever you're generating statements of the problem. It's useful just to make sure that you've really explored the problem from all possible perspectives. So that's the ladder of abstraction. Two simple questions, why and what's stopping you, can really help you to see whatever problem you're working on from many perspectives. Any questions? Yeah, can I have my ladder back now? I'm losing my grip. Yeah, we knew he was losing his grip. Roger, why don't you go and get him the ladder? Ladder? But, but I just sold it. <gasps> Oops! <laughs> However, now that I've sold the ladder, I've got some cash. Can I buy you lunch? Sure. <laughs> hey, wait, where are you going? Wait! Ah!